Hi, in this video I show you some interesting stuff about the compositor and blender. Maybe you have the same experience like me, that you are sliding things around and at first you are enthusiastic, but at the back of your mind you feel uncomfortable because you didn't know exactly what's going on. And when you check back your original render you see that it looks better than all the work what you did in the compositor. So this video is about some basic operations, we get to understanding what's going on exactly, how to manipulate scene linear data and then we go advanced, we do the pivot contrast and work with multi-layers. So a quick recap of the previous video, scene referred versus display referred. We are, there are a lot of programs out there that works with graphics and they work with data between 0 to 1 or they translate that in the UI to 0 to 255 or was 256, I don't know, but and uh, some hex code, but it's all the same um, thing. But in Blender we are dealing with completely different kind of data. That goes from zero to infinity. For example, we have here a mountain and this is the sun. You recognize that, right? Yeah, and here our Alexi camera, of course. So then <laughs> we have uh, the mountain here that uh, will usually have an albedo um, below a one, but the sun can go as high as uh, maybe half a million or so. So when we need to squeeze that the data, we need to squeeze that on our monitor. So yeah, we have a few transforms, like we had the default view before, and nowadays we use more the filmic view. So yeah, that's the important to know. Scene linear data, that is your 3D scene, and what's on your monitor or after the view transform, we are talking about display referred data. Recap, default view versus filmic view. Until, I think it was 2017, Blender used the default view, and after that, Filmic transform view was released. The problem with the default view that Blender used for many years was it didn't properly transform the scene referred data to display referred data. In layman's terms, the values that were higher than 1 in the scene showed clipped on a monitor. So that means, for example, everything brighter than the sky here is white. We see that. Filmic, on the other hand, transforms the data to a monitor so that we don't lose data, we still see everything. And it's even a bigger problem when you export this as PNG, you cannot do anything anymore, you cannot go back from here to something like this, that you have your data back. Uh, this one is broken. The problem when compositing in Blender. There is a problem in the compositor, it's like this. Before 2017, the, the Blender developers seemingly thought it's okay to get inspiration from photo editing software for the notes in the compositor. Probably it's because it's not that obvious that the notes are broken with such a broken transform view, the default transform view, until we use a proper transform view, like Filmic Blender. For example, we have the brightness contrast node or let come again. The, the problem with these nodes and many other nodes in the compositor is that they are designed for display referred data. That means they use a formula for data for values between 0 and 1. At least they are not working properly on scene referred data. So we have a bunch of nodes now in the blender that you better don't use. So here you see our dynamic range. This is the sun and here are things like mountain, sky, so that's a huge range. So you got everything in here. What what's below the sun? You got here the the mountain, the toilet, the <laughs> the um, everything what you see uh, here. Let's say on a piece of the sky, and then suddenly you got the sun. So if you have tools that work on this uh, data, then it's a bit out of tune. So we have the sun. I measured uh, once uh, like. 250,000 display linear data. The sky showed up as a 0 0.5 linear display data, 0 0.3, and the mountain, and this one is 0 0.06 in my case, and on the display data show 0 0.2. That's around, I think, around here. A basic operations multiply. We all know what multiply is. Like two times 12 is 24, but I suppose most of us don't have really an idea what happens when you multiply all the values of a render. Multiplying all the values, that's exposure, and the effect is like what you see in the screenshots. When you asked me a few years ago, 
you ask me, what do you see in these renders? I would say, oh, yeah, this picture is brighter, so it's brightness. But that's not because brightness that looks different, brightness that looks like that. So best is to look at the screenshots and realize that this multiplication or called exposure. Something else is going on though, and that is the, the filmic transform view is on. That's a good thing because if that's not on and we use the default view, then we see something like this. So we have here the original, and this is, I believe, Affinity Photo, yes. So I put the um, exposure on one, whatever that means, one. So, um, and then we see this. We see already a bigger sun here, but if we put the exposure on three, then we got a nice sign glow around, <laughs> around the sun. <laughs> so, and yeah, this is uh, completely broken already. So that's um, exposure. So a good thing we see exposure like this, right? Now the basic operation add, add, raises or lowers the overall brightness. So here on the left, I have the raw transform view. And that's only because I want to have a graph uh, here that, that is not affected by anything else. So I see a straight line here and I add values. And what happens if you do that, you will see this whole block is just going up and everything else stays the same. So uh, when you do that in the picture, um, uh, I have to switch on filmic view transform. Otherwise we don't see well what's going on. We don't see the picture. Well, well, so this is the brightness that looks like this. The next basic operation is power. I know what power means. It's like two to the power of three is two times two times two is eight. But I don't have really an idea what it is when you apply it to multiple data. So I made a graph over here. I bump up the value, uh, the power, this value, and I see a curve like that. When you when you apply it to a render, then you will see it like this, and then you see it's actually contrast. The sky is getting lighter, lighter, and the base of the trunk is getting darker and darker. And you will see a leaf like this, this leaf over here, and you compare it, this, that doesn't change that much. So I will show you how that looks like in Blender, so you see better what it is. Here I have a high dynamic uh, render, and when I bump up the contrast, you look at the waveform over here. You see that the values below this line stretching uh, down, and values above the line uh, stretching up. When we use the power instead, uh, similar happens, but it's slightly different. Quite different. You see the stretching is different, the, the line is approximately the same. But the problem is, uh, this value over here, um, we would, most likely we want to have more contrast, so that is stretching around this point. So we call this the pivot point, and we can change that, I'll show you later. Next, I made a list of nodes that doesn't seem to work to me for scene referred data. For example, when we go to Blender, we put contrast here. You see the contrast uh, here, the data below, All right? And then we bump it up to one, check the data, and then you see there are no details anymore. So I did similar things with the other nodes in a high dynamic scene check what's uh, going on and so far this is my conclusion like lift camera and gain uh, seems they are designed for display preferred data contrast and the brightness brightness contrast node the gamma node the mix nodes like these ones screen difference dark and light and those uh, things and then the rgb curve seems to work uh, okay i think not sure but for sure the film like and when you switch to a channel then that's uh, quite uh, wrong the color ramp, color ramp of Obviously, that's more for mixing uh, nodes. That's not for linear data because color ramp contains uh, values between 0 and 1. And then the color correction, uh, correction gamma and lift, uh, shows uh, issues. As far as I know, the most math nodes are working. You and, uh, you and value and the U saturation value node. I'm not sure about saturation. I'm always struggling, struggling with saturation. Uh, the color balance seems to be okay, so that's ASC, CDL. Then all input and output nodes, all converse, 
but as I said, the color ramp is for mixing and all the store node. So um, if you if you have more information, then um, let me know in the comments, and then I will update um, the information in the description of the video. To get quality out of your compositor, you need to feed it with quality. One important ingredient is high quality textures with plausible Albedo values. But are PBR textures really PBR? Free PBR textures most likely for 50 or 80% not. I collected some PBR materials and I put it in the scene and the tiles here. They look as bright as snow and they're supposed to be wood. And whereas if I am careful about the Albedo values, I calibrate like with a false color, etc. So I do that before I'm going to render. So then it looks more like this. So that's quite a big difference, right? There are many other things. Maybe you can put clamping off. Of course, you use View Transformer Filmic because then you can see what's going on in the scene. I suppose more samples rather than uh, the noising. A low pixel filter. Maybe that can uh, work to get better renders because uh, you see the pixel filter over here on the film. I now rendered this scene two times. So this is with pixel filter. I thought it was five pixels. And here that's one. So I thought, why not? I put it off or I suppose one is off. Uh, and then um, do the pixel filter blurring. Uh, do that in post process. I'm not sure, but if you know more about it, uh, let me know in the comments. So then of course, high quality HDRI or good light setup. And I think for the rest, I would keep it uh, simple and clean. For example, I have your Blender. When I start Blender, I start usually with Filmic, uh, look non-exposure zero, gamma one, and uh, the strength of the environment on one, like that. Very interesting and a little bit confusing is how to work with the waveform, the values you see over here. When you right click on the render, exposure and gamma and the notes in the compositor. Um, I experienced some very strange when I was in uh, Blender. And then I went to, uh, I, I click here, right click, and then I see values over here. Like now I see um, uh, R0.016. And when I change the exposure and I go back there and then I see values changing. Uh, let's see, so 0 0.02. I put, uh, and so the value is not changing, but that happened as well with gamma. So I thought, what's going on here? And I thought, I want to figure out how it all works. So I made a table. So um, it's like this. Actually, it's quite simple. There's one thing a bit strange to, in my opinion. But So how it is, you have your scene at um, a linear data. Then you have your compositor. And then the, these values over here. They will be measured after that. I always thought that these values were from directly from your scene, but it is not. So if you change something in the compositor, then you will see that these values are changing. Maybe I can demonstrate it. So here we have a cube and that's around 0 0.02. Then I go to my compositor. Let's bump up the contrast ridiculously high. And we see, wow, minus. How is that possible? <laughs> and uh, that's in this. So yeah, so when you change something in the compositor, then you see um, these files are also changing. That, that's uh, the thing, actually. The other things are quite obvious. Uh, obvious. So when you change uh, gamma and the color management panel, that these uh, values won't, won't change. So if you do that. Also with exposure, nothing will change over here. But of course, when you change uh, your material and you're going to render out, then uh, the values are changing, obviously. When you change the um, environment strength and you render out again, uh, that will not affect the emission shader. But uh, the diffuse and uh, when you right click here, this is a HDRI. So that's also understandable. And then if you change something in the um, compositor, uh, always these uh, values will uh, be different. So again, um, this is also interesting. So you have your scene, and next is the compositor. Uh, you have, uh, and then these uh, values will be measured. After that, uh, exposure is going to work before the transform view. And then you have uh, your transform view that translates data 
to your monitor, then you have the gamma in your uh, color management. So that's quite interesting to understand. So yeah, yeah. And this waveform, this waveform is uh, after the the gamma. The, so that comes the last one in step. So you have here the waveform over here. Uh, the other settings, let's check. So you see here the X, the, the position of the mouse cursor by pixel. So you see the uh, amount of pixels. Is that is the depth, we have no depth over here. Then uh, the, G, the RGB, that's the linear data affected by the compositor. Then you see pipeline over here, then you see CM as color management, and then you see RGB values. So they will uh, change whatever you do. If you change uh, exposure here, then everything is white. Also with the gamma. Uh, let me see, 0.7, yeah, all right, and what else? Yeah, that's it. Now we can start with the real interesting stuff. Um, so we had the basics. There's one more thing I want to show though. And here you see, I have values, a message shader with filmic transform view on. And here's the brightness contrast node. Value range from uh, 0 to 1, and you see then a curve like that, and the contrast is off. Here's a mid, um, they call it mid grade, it's a uh, albedo value of 0 0.18, and it will show up uh, at 0 0.5 in, um, in the waveform on your monitor. So this is mid gray. When I uh, turn on the contrast uh, completely open, I cannot go higher than that. You will see that um, all values below 0 0.5 get black, the other ones get white. So that means that this brightness contrast node is working good on values between 0 and 1. Um, but, but when I load a high dynamic scene like this one, and you do that again, you will see that the mid grade, this bar over here with 0 0.18, is, uh, will be pushed down. So that was that. So we can start now with really interesting things. What I'm going to show you is to how to build a pivoted contrast node group so that we can then specify where the pivot point is of the contrast. For that, Oh, by the way, I switched over to a headset because I had a microphone in my hand, but that's a bit difficult if I use Blender now. So I try it from the top of my head because that's interesting. So we start with a converter, then we separate RGBA, plug it in there, and converter, combine RGBA, and connect all the nodes over here. Then we look for converter, we look for a math node, and then power. We plug it in there, shift D to copy that, drag that down, D to copy that one. So next we add a math node. Where is it? Here. Math node, no, not a math node. We add color mix node and we put that on divide. Divide over here, plug it in there. Then color mix node, we put that on multiply. Then let's make a node grouper out of this node group. Click here, note, make group. We can also press Ctrl G, Ctrl G, make note group. Uh, we plug this in over here, all the exponents over here. Now I press N, I click on the note tab over here. I'm going to change it, I'm going to change it to power, for example. Then 
I press stop to go out of the node group and I will give it a name <clears throat> so I will recognize it next is I did it wrong I think yeah I did it wrong Oh, no, that's all right. That's all right. So we have now here divide, power, multiply, and then we get these node, and then uh, Control G again to make that a node group. So that was then the power. Power, that's all right. And this is the Python point. Uh, we can fool a little bit because if we plug this in and the, the, this node group thinks it's an image so I'm going to cheat a little bit I say mav plug this in over here so the node group will show them that uh, a grey socket and I do <coughs> connect that one so the value and value that's the Python point or change the name Python so you will see if it clicked up you go out of the node group you say power and Python let's change the name Python that uh, contrast and copy that one and paste it over there and also here Hmm. Now let's check what happened. So power has one, nothing happens, and mid gray is on like that. Let's see if it works. So I press M to disable the node, nothing happens. That looks good. Now I have here a gray bar, less a emission, and it has the value of zero. 0.18 and it should show up mid gray over here and that looks like I think that this line over here now let's check if it uh, work I press shift and I bump up the value over here and that looks perfect you see that this value 0 0.5 so for the display 0 0.5 with the albedo uh, value is um, 0 0.18 so if I bump that up it uh, stay, uh, stays there I can also define other other private points so I press M then for example if I'm interested in um, yeah, let's say oh, this one, the, the, that part of the mountain here. Let's say I'm interested in this. Maybe I can get an impression. I can right click over here and see the values there. So that's 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.05. Well, it's quite obvious that it is around 0 0.05, I think. So we are here 0 0.05 press M to enable the node and if I bump this up let's bump it up completely let's see what happens so yeah I see that I have to go a little bit lower than that so 0 0.048 no I have to go higher so <coughs> 0 0.05 one yeah that's more like it so we go back put it on one bump the value up <laughs> that's too much um that's a lot of, that's a lot of contrast
Usually I use something like 0 0.3, oh, 1.3, uh, 1 1.5 then. Okay, so I'll press M. You see that this value doesn't change that much around here. Well, let's take a look. So now it says, let me use bigger. Uh, we had this in mind, right? So here on the uh, after color management, I think, yeah, zero point. Zero point two. All right, yeah, so that uh, I think is quite close, but anyways. Let's go crazy. Um, so I click here in the middle of some, <laughs> and I see a value like, um, what is it, uh, 55,000. Right. That's cool. So let's do a recap what we did in Blender. So basically we have here the part that is uh, power. Before the power we are going to divide by the pivot point. And after the power we are going to multiply with a power point. That way we are cheating, I think. It works like that. The power function. And then we put uh, the, these nodes first in the node group. So we have then divide, power, multiply. We put that in the node group and then we connect uh, this to the pivot point, these two, and we connect all the exponents to the power. So we have then a node group like that. So uh, then we have that and you see that I have here uh, and there's an emission shader, 0 0.18 strength. And then you will see, uh, and then you see in the waveform, there's a 0 0.5. And when you increase the power, it will stay on the same position. So um, when you look at this, you might think, oh, this is uh, brighter than that one, but it's uh, not. I checked with a color picker, um, but um, what you see is, um, you see it brighter maybe because the, 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 the uh, what's around it uh, has set changed. So... Right, and yeah, let's jump to multi-layer pivot um, contrast. The last inference, uh, the last interesting part I want to show you is multi-layer pivoted contrast. You see an HDRI over here, and I separated the bush and the rest of the scene uh, of the HDRI with a luminance key. That's a matte, and that uh, worked uh, quite okay, not perfect. Uh, so I applied um, on the bush, on the bush here, um, pivoted contrast and another pivoted contrast on uh, the, the mountain and the background. So then you get um, very different effects. Uh, so, but the thing is with Mate is there's always an issue, no matter what you do. If you zoom in closely enough, even with crypto, crypto mat, you see um, a line like that. And there is a kind of solution for that. I checked the video and it works with inpaint and inverse inpaint. A kind of a trick, but even then you see sometimes artifacts like that and you see a bit kind of a jack line here and here are some things. And if you animate, I think you don't want that because it's a lot of work to correct that and you will always see it. So then I bumped into another solution and that is working with the holdouts and that uh, that worked pretty well. Um, so I'll show you how that works. So you have um, a view layer, you click uh, here on Blender on this um, icon to copy the settings. So you have two view layers. Then and you click on this filter here, you enable the holdouts. 
so you can see your holdouts in the, in the outliner like that. These are the holdouts. Then you select here, you can select here the view layer. You go to view layer, the first one, the original one. And then you make a holdout for a collection. You have to use collections for holdouts. You cannot um, use holdouts, I think, for object, maybe uh, with a holdout shader. But uh, here I use a collection and then I uh, never hold out like that. So then you switch over to another view layer, in this case, uh, view layer dot zero zero one, and then I hold out the other one. That means I make that transparent. Then I thought you can do that with the alpha over, but that seems not the case. What you have to do, you see here two view layers, one, two, and each other has another uh, holdout or and then you have the image, you're going to add that image with this one. Put that, um, uh, that's our output, you put, plug it here in the image. So you add this image with that image. And put, plug it in there. And you do the same with alpha. Put this alpha in, that alpha, you add it and plug it here in the alpha. If you have that, then you can do here your operations like this. Um, for example, pivoted contrast. Here I use um, I change the U um, value, but you can use pivoted contrast. But uh, sometimes I believe when you use emission shader or uh, other alphas in your scene, there might be an issue. So uh, I was just switch over to here so you see it better. So before the operations, you add the alpha convert, premolt straight, you do your operations, and after the operations, right before the, the you add the things, you um, add another alpha convert, but then straight to multiply. So, and then in that case, you get perfect edges. So, yeah, those are the things I wanted to discuss in the video. Maybe I'm going to make a next video and, oh yes, if you see something that's incorrect or you want to add some information, you can uh, leave some comments and then um, I can add that to the description, etc. Alright, thanks for watching and see you next time.